Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about, I guess, more unconventional comps, which are especially prevalent in Princess Arena. Princess Arena really requires you to like put together what, like 15 characters to battle another 15. And usually it means that everyone's kind of throwing a bunch of ah. together. A lot of the times this gets really messy like this. Um, this you know, there's, there's always ideas behind it and everyone's thinking about it. But I guess it's here that we can actually apply what we learned in like the first three or four videos to to actually disassemble each of these comps and like oh well, that one's a known one and that will be next but like like this you know what like this you probably wouldn't be able to find this on the database and <laughs> i just used what i had and then i beat it so yeah essentially i'm just going to be running through a bunch of these comps and my thought process on how to dismantle them and let's just get into it so let's just go with this one here we have a miyako jun tamaki suzuna and yui the first thing that came to mind was that i need to take down that miyako so akari has to go in I don't have any other mages. Akari is the only answer I have. After that, I saw the Tamaki and Tamaki, the only real way to deal with it, I didn't have a way. Honestly, my opinion was like, if Akari can take down the Miyako, then she'll be good. But like the Tamaki will take her out after. In my Tamaki store video, you'll notice that I used my Nozomi to like take away the Tamaki by using the taunt on her so that the Tamaki will instead attack the Nozomi rather than the Akari on the UB. However, what's happening here is that I decided that I needed at least two tanks before I can actually break through his. I just needed a assurance that my front line was stronger than his because otherwise he would roll me over. I take Monica because Monica gives me assurance or more assurance that Akari will be able to break down that Miyako. And lastly, the idea behind the Arisa is that she can take down like them one by one from front to back after cucking that Yui with her skill 2, I think, which lowers her action speed. I don't want that Yui to make effective heals, so that's why I took the Arisa. The reasoning for two tanks is that I, whenever I go into any battle, pretty much any teams, like if I think my tanks are not going to hold up against the theirs, I will reconsider it. I, I pretty much won't do it. Tanks are just so important in arena. If your tank falls, like everything pretty much just dies. Imagine if there was only one tank between like uh, your team and their Kaori. Their Kaori or Makoto or whoever, they pretty much melt the moment you look at them. And so I just had to make sure that my front line was stronger than their front line. It also helps that their team is composed of three frontal units, which my Nozomi is going to be like stunning all the time, as well as my Monica getting her UB off on all three of them. Another thing I would have liked to run would be my Mitsuki, but like my Mitsuki was required over here and this is just one of the counters to the Reno comp and I just couldn't afford to have her over in team one. So let's play this back real quick and let's see what happens. I hope things go to my predictions but all right. So what we've got here is that you can see that um, everything is starting. Okay, cool. So Akari's going to beat her up. She's already defense down. They all got stunned like I predicted. The Yui has gotten cucked by my Arisa and hopefully she won't be able to get a heal off in time. I really want that Miyako to die like ASAP or else it's just not going to happen. And we've got Arisa and is she going to miss? She's not going to miss. That's quite good. That is actually really good. Look at all those stuns and the Miyako is taken down. So next we've got Akari pulling off that. Now honestly, I've never really like had much utility for that, but you know what? I'll take it. And my Jun is not taken down. Now at this point, it's two tanks versus one tank and there just is no way that he's going to win, right? He's got damage, but he is not going to make it through my Nozomi. Like Jun may fall, but Nozomi is just way too strong. And my Arisa is just fighting front to back look at that damage oh my gosh 11k like that's that's crippling and you'll notice that yui has not even healed once yet not even once and so that was like the real utility for my uh arisa and oh okay okay you know what i take that i take that now after after wrecking his tanks probably almost two okay Okay, cool. Okay, anyway, so we got the taunt off. Tamaki actually hits Nozomi, which is nice, which is very, very nice. But like all of that, I didn't calculate. And we've got the front to back again. Arisa, she is just mowing them down. And after the tanks are gone, everything else dies. Like, okay, Tamaki, that's kind of, she's dodging a bit too much. But <laughs> anyway, so we've got that again, like the Akari Yubi. I've never really like, it's not really a big thing. And look at my nose. Okay, I didn't expect her to dodge it, but everything is just falling one by one. And that's kind of the game. Like, I, I think everything went as predicted, kind of, but wait, 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 wait a second. That I'm pretty sure was the Yui's first Yubi. 
You see the crippling effects of the Arisa, right? Oh my gosh. Not only that, but the Monica boosted the Arisa and so that <laughs> that Yui was just not going anywhere, to be honest. So next we've got this comp, which is Nozomi, Monica, Akari, uh, Io, and Yuki. So, <laughs> you know, honestly, the, the Monica makes me very, very nervous. But the Monica, Akari, that tells me to do not take, do not take my Miyako. As well as the fact that there are three magic damage dealers on their team to <laughs> do not take Miyako. So who do I take in? Instead, I take my Kuka and my Jun. Obviously, in best case scenario, I would take my Nozomi over here instead. But Nozomi, she is required. You know, I see that triple front line. My Nozomi goes right there. Uh, I'll just talk quickly about the first team. It's just a standard store comp. It has a Yukari variant. I'm using the exact same build I've been running the entire time. And it still wins against them builds like this. Now, hopping back down here, let's talk about the logic. So I see the Io, I see Akari, and I see Yuki. Io, she is going to get wrecked. <laughs> this Tamaki Arisa combo, I'm, I'm pretty pretty sure like it's it wrecks the IO without even like actually no IO does get her UB off but it's just not enough right because I've got like pretty much three sources of sustain Kuka heals herself Jun heals people and Yukari also heals people it's just not enough like these two are strong but they're not strong enough to actually kill each other but yeah like I said the Tamaki and the Arisa they should both be ganging up on the IO the IO should be dead like super super fast and then the rest is history it's so this is a, a lot less front to back and what I mean by front to back is that you know you go from the tank to the next tank we go for like you know killing position one through to five this one i'm really hoping to like you know go into their back line and really wreck them first and you know make my way you know from everywhere the reasoning for the yukari is for the tp boost but as well as being like a really good bruiser like she's just really solid i just don't see that much damage over here like i owe akari okay it's a little bit of damage but i don't think it's enough so what i did was i brought three units that i think would be able to sustain all of that also yukari does have her ub but i honestly don't have much confidence in her getting her UB off. Usually all the mages have already casted all of their spells before Yukari can even get her UB off. It's just at this point for me, it's just an added bonus. All right, with that being said, let's get into the replay and see what happens. All right, so we're in and we've got, where's the, oh my gosh, wait, she's almost dead already. Oh, that IO, we might not even eat, oh, okay. So the IO does ult, let's see. And pretty much nobody took much damage from that IO ult, which is very, very bizarre. Okay, hopefully the cooker will get some healing at some point and be able to live through all of this. So she does get her UB off, but I was hoping that Jun or the Yukari would heal, uh, which is fine. That's just, uh, that's just Arisa doing the front to back with Nozomi. You know, the Nozomi has to fall and the Arisa is here to do that. How Wait, the IO is gone. Wait, Tamaki didn't even ult and the IO is gone. Okay, that's, um... That's very interesting. Okay, so so there I really should have expected that. And so the Tamaki UB'd into the Nozomi. I personally do this like on the flip side. So, you know, like Nozomi, Monica, and we put Nozomi in the front position and usually the Tamaki will get caught. So honestly, I didn't practice what I preached. My Tamaki got caught by their Nozomi and, but honestly, that was okay because their IO just got taken out super fast. So hopefully over time, because you know, it's not always about just the UB. You saw Arisa and Tamaki were able to both gang up on the IO and kill her without any UBs. So if we keep playing, let's have a look at what happens next. And everyone is still freaking alive. Like this is, they, they, they are way too tanky to be taken down by like this team. It's just a bit too weak. Uh, so everything is being thrown at the Nozomi just cause she's got a taunt. Um, and, th and that's just how it is. We've got Arisa coming out with this and hopefully that takes her down. I think that's, oh no, she's still alive. Okay, and actually, Oh, that was nice because Yukari actually was able to block that Yuki ult. On the other hand, Yuki's ult just doesn't do that much damage. And you know, even if she didn't have that up, that's okay, to be honest. All right, so we hit that and we've got the... Oh, Nozomi is still not fallen. Monica is able to actually get her UB off, but okay, well, Nozomi just fell. And we've got the Tamaki on the Yuki, which is which is perfect, right? Tamaki on the Yuki, honestly, I would have preferred Tamaki on the uh, Akari, but that's just how it is. Um, and and that's, that's, like, that's kind of it. It's freaking over. Like, you just go front to back from here, right? There's no more supports left. There's no heals and they are just going to die. And it's just it's just death here. Remember that poor, that poor little Akari. All right, now we've got these two, which are very, very, very interesting. Okay, so we've got a Kuka into a Pekarin, Nozomi, Jita, and Yukari. 
The first thing I think is I see four frontliners as well as three of them being tanks. Honestly, four frontliners is already enough to convince me to get my cleave comp out, which is Nozomi, it's the um, it's the Mitsuki, and it's this Monica. I don't have to take my Akari because there is no Miyako. Miyako is on team one. And Akari, honestly, she's not going to do much here because Kuka was going to block all of the Akari damage. So I also bring Makoto because we've got three tanks. And three tanks is honestly quite tanky. So I've got the double defense down from Mitsuki and Makoto. Koto. And then I've got Arisa because I just want to fight front to back. I don't, I'm not really depending on her second skill, the action speed reduction on anything. Arisa is just a really solid, really safe unit. Like, you know, she stands in the back so she doesn't get hit by the Nozomi uh, AoE stun. Honestly, if this was Suzuna or Shiori, that would be completely fine and I would have done the same thing here. He's got a Yukari, but the Yukari is not really in the equation because like, I'm not even going to bring da uh, like magical damage into this. Yukari could be looked at as a source of TP gains and heals, but I don't think it's going to be enough, especially with the Mitsuki having her like HP recovery down. Uh, this team is, I'm pretty sure it's like super dead. All right, let's have a look at the replay and see how it plays out. All right, we're in all oh, one time speed. Okay, so we should see some pretty sweet stuns from, oh my God, look at that four man stun. Oh, that is juicy as, okay. So that Kuka is pretty much dead. Like she's not even gonna get her UB off. And we've got Aris's first UB, bam. Okay, and like I said, it's going to be your Shiori, it's just going to be your Susana. it's just some straightforward safe damage. So I probably wouldn't take like Eriko or um, Jita, and I mean you could take Jita or Eriko or whoever, but like they, they just get stunned because uh, up front with that Nozomi, oh my god, they just got stunned again. And their second tank has been taken down, man, all this defense down, you just can't fight it. Now's the real boss, like Nozomi is a, is a real juicer, like, but... Oh, we've got Mitsuki and Jita attacks the Nozomi. It's just not enough, right? I just like she, Jita was the only was the only damage on the team. It's just not enough to take down the Nozomi, right? However, however, there's a risk here, right? And the risk here, and it's it's something I did account for, is that if my bet on my Nozomi was just if the Nozomi died, if my Nozomi died. I would have lost, right? They would have just gone front to back. There's a possibility of them being held up a little bit by Monica and Mitsuki because my Monica and Mitsuki are relatively like tanky. But for the most part, you know, I would have a lot less confidence, but I, I really had some confidence in my Nozomi. Nozomi is just so tank and against that g man, it's just uh, all of that. It's it's just way more than enough. So if I was to summarize what I said there, like I reckon if there's only one DPS, Nozomi is more than enough. A five star Nozomi, by the way, don't take your three stars Nozomi and then and, and she dies and then you come back and blame me. All right, let's get back into it. And it's pretty much over. It's pretty much GG. We're just going to go front to back from here. And Monica's UB, all right, like, you know, it's pretty sweet, pretty sick. You got, you see that Yukari UB, it's not even doing anything, right? It's just got the shield up. And we just go from here and it's it's just death. Like, they, there is no way, it's, you know, it's 2v5. It's just GG. Oh my God, Arisa is it's pretty dank, to be honest. And that's game. Okay. All right. This is the last comp I'm going to talk through today. This is a pretty interesting one as well. However, ah, I see that Makoto, I see her in position to instantly take out my Maho. Like she's going to be blinded for quite a long time. Another thing that made me cringe a little bit about this comp is that you have Monica and Kokoro on the same team and their action speed buffs, they just don't stack, my dude. I should be a little bit scared because they're running an almost identical comp to my Tamaki store counter comp, I guess. Instead of Kokoro, I would usually have an Akari and instead of Jun, I would usually have an Nozomi. However, what's interesting is that June is just, just not that tanky, you know, she's she's not going to hold up. She's not going to hold that. As long as I have enough damage, like I'm going to bust that wide open and like mow them down. And so for my own team, we have Miyako, who's a no brainer. They are all physical damage. I've got June here simply because my Nozomi was used here. If if not June, then your second best tank. It could be a three star Pekron, for example. And this is where it gets interesting. So I bring a Kari and that's just because I was feeling a little bit meme right? Like I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to bust that guy open, I can just keep walking up and keep busting them open. Also, as Kari takes down people, she's going to get TP back to keep just going on and mowing them down, which is pretty funny to watch. And I hope that's what happens here. I can't remember, to be honest. Now, something funny about me is that whenever I see an action speed buff on the other team, the first thing I think of is to consider taking action speed buff of my own. Obviously, it's not a necessity, but like I look at it and I'm like, well, I kind of want like kind of an even match at least. In this case, I think the Monica overrides it. And so I do lose a little bit in action speed, but my comp overall 
is designed to counter his. This whole action speed thing honestly is irrational and you probably shouldn't learn from it. <laughs> but that was the idea behind the Kokoro thing. And then we've got Maho who's going to blind them one by one as we move through their entire team from front to back. So you can see I don't have any back attackers here. I don't have a Tamaki. I don't have Orisa, And we're just going to go front to back. Easy. All right. Slow down. Okay. So... The idea here is that we're going to take that tank down ASAP. He's already got defense down. She's going to she's going to get wrecked. And we've got the Makoto. She's been blinded. And that Jun is almost dead. But my Miyako is holding up. My Miyako can heal. And she's just not taking enough damage to, to die. Okay. That kind of sucks that the Jun actually got the UB off. It'd be really, really desirable if I could instead have killed that Jun before she got that off. I guess one thing to learn from that is that perhaps like Kokoro, if I had instead uh, replaced her with somebody who did a lot more damage or something, like a Makoto or something, that probably could have gone a lot better. But honestly, like I think it's okay because like it, it, despite having that, the Jun is still going to fall like super fast. Uh, she's, she's living a little bit, but she is about to die again. Okay. And she's gone. Well, Miyako is almost full health, which is <laughs> which is very interesting, but that's exactly how it was supposed to go, right? Okay. Ooh, Miyako took like half HP because she had the defense down. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's one. There's one Kari. There's one for Kari. We've got the Kokoro. Honestly, honestly, like I always like discredit, like, oh not discredit, but like um don't give Kokoro enough credit for actually like offloading some of the damage off the tanks. And I talk about this all the time, right? So Kokoro goes in, she does the tri slash, she takes a bit of damage, about half health, and then she just heals it back up and gives everyone a buff. In the meantime, that does mean my Miyako is like she, she's taking a lot less damage than she should be. And so that is definitely one of the reasons why my Miyako is surviving, especially at two stars. All right, let's keep going with this. Oh man, it's just, oh my gosh. It's just pain from here. It's just pain. Like my Kari, okay, take some hits. Jun Yubi's for nothing because she's not gonna even gonna like get hit. And my Kari is actually gonna be able to get her Yubi off again. Let's just watch somebody die again. All right, who's gonna die? Is it Kokoro that dies next? Okay, oh, oh my Lord. And that my friends is the tank buster, the war buster. The uh, women killer, the boss killer. That is Kari, my dudes, and that's pretty much it. And there's there's nothing he can do here. Like it's just my my comms just way too tanky. And I think this one, my power is like 2k less. Like I this is a, <laughs> this is a very solid Mimi com, and it and it really worked against this. As for defenses and PA, like honestly, guys, like I I just throw some shit together, and that's kind of like you know <laughs> I'm I'm part of the problem. Okay, I'm part of the problem. I just don't have enough to go around. Like I don't have the mages. I don't have like the Nino and all of the Reno. I, I'm actually missing a lot of like arena meta units. So I'm just gonna quickly flick through them. Like uh, I I hope you can see my logic in some of them, but that's honestly I don't even know about this comp. If you guys find me in arena or like P arena, please don't attack me. I'm already having a rough time. I cry every night uh, when I when I wake up. I, I see my rankings have dropped like you know 5,000 down the line and I'm like oh, bruh why live but yeah let's wrap it up there I don't think there's much else to like show you guys this is that was pretty funny to be honest I hope you guys have learned something from that it was a little meme -y, but like honestly in P arena it happens all the time right guys like in your brackets hopefully that like stuff like that happens i'm gonna leave you guys with a secret message bust that wall baby if you guys could leave that secret message down in the comments below i would really really appreciate it, it tells me that you've made it to the end of the video and i am forever grateful there's nothing left to it guys if you've enjoyed this video or this video has helped you consider liking subscribing sharing with your friends yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below or come to the Discord and you can ask us directly. But aside from that, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this series. You know, this arena series has been pretty well received. Let me know how you guys are feeling about this. Honestly, I'm having a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.